Hello, Steve Caliper here with DSG, and on behalf of our Doing Good Better University, we're certainly grateful that you've joined us today. I'm going to provide my tips as you begin the calendar year of 2019. It's, uh, it's mid-February, we have a lot that we need to do in the uh, space of ministry, nonprofits, and all that we're called to do. So really what I'm wanting to do today is just to outline and encourage you to um, hit the new year on the run because we have uh, such a, a, a portfolio and an opportunity to do some great work together. And uh, certainly uh, my mission and what you've heard me share and uh, present uh, pretty continuously over the last couple of years is this, this passion around doing good better. And I'm really called to uh, make sure that you've got the uh, right tools, you've got the right information, and, um, and you've got the right know-how to help you succeed. Uh, no doubt we'd like um, and certainly have interest in you connecting with us to learn more about the university. I, I believe that we've got a regular ongoing platform that could be um, a great resource and a great tool to you personally, as well as a network of other individuals that, um, that share the same platform. So um, as, we, uh, as we head into the new calendar year, let me kind of give um, an overview of, of what I have in mind. Now, I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to transition to the tips. Um, hopefully you can see them okay, but I'm going to talk them through. And I'm going to give some illustrations as we go as well. So um, anyway, I appreciate you being a part of the journey today. Uh, again, this is Steve Caliper with uh, Doing Good Better University. And uh, anyway, welcome. So to get us started, um, really what I want to touch on is on behalf of our ministry together, the landscape of where donors are today, uh, we really need to get our head and our heart around what are donors thinking, what are they experiencing, how do we get them to engage either on an ongoing basis with what we are doing or to get them on board. Um, there's three types of individuals. Those are either giving to us as a donor, and we want to see what we can do to make sure that they continue to give and stay on board. And then there's that group of donors that support already, but might have a capacity to go deeper and or begin to network and champion on our behalf, which is the third group, uh, which are people that we don't yet know or haven't yet given. So those are the three buckets. But the tip of the arrow as far as getting them engaged is very straightforward. You've heard me share it before, but I want to make sure that we're beginning this session with it, uh, which is right here, clarity. Clarity and the convergence of clarity, confidence, and passion, which is really why we do what we do. So the clarity piece, that is who we are, what we do. Confidence is where we're going, vision casting. Where do you want to be in 18, 24, 36 months from now as a ministry and as a team based on initiatives and goals and outcomes? The confidence basically says, from the donor's perspective, I believe and have confidence that you can achieve that goal and that result and that outcome based on what you've done to date. So being able to present and share data and results and outcomes to what you've been able to accomplish, in this case, in 2018 or up to, to now, and then the confidence is built based on, I believe and, and have faith that you can do what you see you're gonna go and the key strategic initiatives are laid out. And then certainly the passion piece, which is our calling, why we're doing it, and uh, undergirded with whether it be the love of Christ or mission or passion, both from an organization standpoint uh, or an individual standpoint. So hopefully that sheds a little light to just begin. Now, I'm gonna share some tips um, with you and I'll interject some stories and some illustrations, but just to get started, um, looking at these tips, um, know your gifts. What I'm meaning by that is, what is it that you're good at? What is it that you do on a weekly or monthly basis that produces results? Um, we're familiar with the 80-20 principle. What I have termed in um, a book that I have written a couple years ago called The Journey to Doing Good Better, is defining the 80-80 principle. So let's break that down into um, an average work week. If we work 50 hours in a week, then the 80-20 principle basically is saying that in what we do, in 10 hours that week produces 80% of the results of our efforts that week. So the challenge to you is look at your activity Define what it is that you do that produces results on behalf of your role, on behalf of the ministry that you serve, you lead, or you're doing donor relations and development for, and look at what it is that you do that produces results. So know your gifts. Um, be productive during the productive hours of the day. And um, what I mean by that is 
productive hours of the day, if your job and role is to connect with donors, be connecting with donors during the productive hours of the day. Do busy work, reports, prepare for email communications early in the morning and in the evenings or whatever, but be productive when you need to. So hopefully that helps as a tip. So know your skills, know your gifts, and find out in your own life and your own role what it is that you do on a weekly basis that produces fruit and results in your role and what you do. So uh, number two, clarity. Um, <laughs> clarity and focus is important. Um, we don't want to enthusiastically overwhelm the group or the donor that we're visiting with. We need to be very clear and concise to who we are, what we do, be focused on the tip of the arrow. It kind of comes back to this, clarity. So when we're presenting and sharing, be clear and focused, both on messaging as well as being clear and focused on how we spend our time, which is knowing our gifts. The third area here is prayer. I do want to make sure that we are um, really offering up prayer for the ministry that we're a part of and serving, for our own efforts in connecting relationally with supporters or potential supporters, or preparing for a presentation or a meeting, uh, prayer for uh, the effort around making thank you calls, whatever it happens to be, be in prayer. The other thing I'm gonna encourage you to do is to be praying for those that we're meeting with, those that are in route to travel to come to a weekend retreat, um, mission trips, um, but even just prayer for donors on a regular basis. If you think about or pray for someone, shoot them a text message. Just say, Tom, thinking about you, just wanna let you know that I was praying for you. Look forward to connecting with you sometime in the next week or two. Be good. Those little subtle touch points. Now, don't pray for someone for that opportunity, but if someone's on your heart, sincerely, lift them up and pray. Pray for your time, pray for your supporters and donors that are in your portfolio, and uh, let them know you're thinking about them. Some little intentional touch points that are very um, organic and real. Uh, the art of it is we wanna just connect and pursue people relationally, and connect relationally. Um, and openness and transparency, which makes it a lot more fun. Um, the next area here is pursue. Uh, we have to um, kind of pursue people, pursue their hearts, pursue time with them, uh, build up a level of rapport and confidence, um, ask questions, dialogue. But, but here's the thing that, that, that we do often, is we pursue, we um, enthusiastically overwhelm and over-communicate, um, we communicate sometimes to the entirety of whatever time block we have with folks. And then it just comes down to, thank you, it was a great time spent. Ask strategic and important questions. Uh, get to know them. Listen. Be intentional around questions, conversations, and listening. The listening part helps you understand where they're at, life challenges, where you could be praying for them, maybe relationships within their own family or, or wherever they're at. But it also gives you a gateway to hearing their interests, hearing their interest in where they get enthused and excited about an initiative or a project that may align with you. And if it does, phenomenal. Um, if it's something that aligns with somebody else, be open about connecting them maybe with some opportunities um, in some networks that you have. <clears throat> so um, pursue with appropriate follow-up. Now, what I mean by that is if you're connecting with people and you have the right follow-up, here's, um, here's a specific tip. In making calls, wanting to spend time with someone, shoot them a text message. Hey Tom, looking forward to hopefully getting together with you in the next week. Or Dave, I know you've been traveling a lot. It'd be great to get together when you're in town. Or, hey, I'm gonna be in Dallas, I'm gonna be in Houston, I'm gonna be in Kansas City, wherever it is that you're going. You ping people and say, hey, I'll be in town for 36 hours or a day. And, ask for availability. Let them know that you're gonna follow up again, likely that they're busy, or voice messages. Hey Randy, this is Steve. I uh, just wanna let you know I'm gonna be in town on Wednesday next week and I'd love to get some time with you. I know you have a lot going on. If it's something that you can give me a call back and let me know, great, or shoot me a text. If not, by Friday I'll give you a call and uh, update my schedule and hopefully it's something that works out. So it's appropriate follow-up. And then also the follow-up is if you've met with someone and there's follow-up items like a report or due diligence or something that you need to get back on, what builds confidence in the fundamental foundation, which is right here, it's not just the confidence in what the ministry or your organization is doing in the field as far as program, 
but it's the level of confidence that the donor, the prospective donor, feels and has with you doing appropriate follow-up in the time and the fashion that you've committed to and promised. So I want to encourage you uh, to be diligent around appropriate follow-up too. Um, the next one here is mirror how you communicate. If they have a lot of interest, they're leaning into the conversation, they're asking questions and wanting to go deep in a particular area, mirror them and go deep. If they want to understand the big picture, 30,000 foot or even 50,000 feet, stay there. Make sure that you mirror their interest and their level of enthusiasm. And that, there's an art to that, but I just want to encourage you to mirror. Now, don't be the one reflecting on them. Try to drive, um, if that makes sense, try to drive the depth to see you know, how far they want to go or what their interests are. So hopefully that's a, a nice tip for you. But mirror how you communicate, measuring depth, breadth, and passion, making sure that you're not blowing them out of the water Mirror their, their style, mirror their interests, mirror their depth and uh, perception in, in their questions. Ask questions and listen. Uh, the next one here is, um, and many of you have heard me share this, the art of the ask. Um, I get asked the question often myself, what is the art of the ask, how do you do it, and when? Well, I say that you make the ask when you've earned the right to ask. And that could be any time. Certainly there's a thin line between crisis and urgency. Certainly donors and, and supporters don't like to fund in the time of crisis. However, there is an urgency, a great commission initiative, a church is planning, uh, we have a youth initiative that needs a bus by next Friday. There's been two women rescued in human trafficking and uh, we need funding to make sure that they have beds and that they can enter a recovery program for restoring their hearts and helping them restore physically and emotionally and spiritually. So there's an urgency because the opportunity is right there and we're gonna to touch on that a little bit too. So uh, just something to consider. Uh, but the, the ask specifically is um, not just when you've earned the right to make the ask. However, the ask is this. When, when we are communicating and it's clear concise of who we are, what we do, how and why we do what we do, undergirded with the passion around the organization, passion around what it is that we feel called to do, creating that confidence that the donor feels like, wow, this is amazing, I want to be a part of this. That's what's really the ask, because when the donor today, because the landscape of philanthropy is this way, when the donor is really thinking about, this is incredible, what do you need? Now, from a development or presentation standpoint, we don't want to stop there. We want to lay out now the strategic initiatives by saying things like, this is what we want to accomplish and achieve. I heard your heart and this is what we could do in Iraq and Syria. This number of church planners, this is the outcome and the result. We need $112,000 to make it happen. What do you think? So they're laying the ask on the table. You're presenting back with clarity to goals, objectives, initiatives, and an outcome with the dollar amount that it's gonna to take to achieve that initiative and that outcome. So hopefully you get that with regard to the art of the ask. You ask when you've earned the right and you allow the donor, the prospective donor to lean into the conversation. If it's a group setting, lunch, banquet, gala, same thing can happen. When we as the presenters have presented with excellence, we are hopeful that the group around the lunch or the group in a banquet room or weekend retreat or if it's a one-on-one. -on -one. You can do the same by moving someone, by getting someone to think and experience and feel what it is that we're wanting to do, why we're wanting to do it with clarity to goals, objectives, and outcomes when we've essentially become worthy and they're saying, what do you need? I'm in. And that gets either presented in a card, um, a challenge, a follow-up strategy to individuals that might be around the lunch looking at their networks to how some of their network might be able to play a role in helping complete a particular initiative or project, or it's a one-on-one -on -one discussion, which is just, here's the goal, here's the plans, here's the initiative, this is what it costs. Um, what of this amount uh, do you feel excited and feel that you wanna contribute? So hopefully that helps a little bit too. Let's continue with, um, why do you do what you do? I think it's natural for us to be excited about the mission of our organization the mission of what it is that we feel called to do and be a part of. 
tend to be enthusiastic and passionate around the, the organization's mission. But it's also important to share why we do what we do. So on behalf of Development Services Group, which I've been doing now for a number of years, engaging um, nearly 600 organizations, um, the Doing Good Better uh, platform with my book and the university, which I invite you to visit, check out, and maybe join and be a part of the university, um, as well as the families that I've served and worked with as far as family foundations. My life mission and purpose, why I do what I do, is my mission is to assist and serve a thousand organizations and families to see a billion dollars deployed effectively for the kingdom. And um, so certainly that's just my own personal interest. So find when you're presenting your organization where your own personal interests and passions align and fit into the relationship. Now, some of this you have to mirror yourself and you have to mirror your depth of relationship. Uh, you may know some supporters for years and they might know the organization well, uh, might be first time. So you have to gauge to how much you have to go into all of this based on the fact of the depth and the length of your relationship with someone. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna touch on something in a minute about that. So um, positive activity. <laughs> the bottom line here is what are you doing intentionally every week, every month, every quarter, or annually to just simply grow the number of people that are in your personal network, that your personal network relates to what it is that you're doing professionally for the ministry that you serve. What are you doing to just get to know What's the positive activity around where you're engaged, where you're connecting with people, dinner parties, are you being intentional around when people ask you what you do that you can allude to what you're doing and share a little bit, mirror them, don't go too much in depth if you're at a social event or a dinner party, um, but connect with them and ask if they have a window of time in the next week or two to get together where you can go deeper. The intentionality of being positive, uh, proactive, and looking at how you're just growing your network is going to lead to positive results on behalf of the ministry that you serve. Uh, share results. Um, we, we are certainly in a, in a landscape where it is, it's about results. It's about how is the world or how are kids or lives being changed or families served or where's the gospel being presented to unreached people groups. Whatever it happens to be, it's about results. Now, it's not all tied to best ROI. It's tied to results. Being able to create confidence and clarity to what we accomplished in 2018 creates a platform to validate what we believe is possible for this current year of 2019. So our vision and our mission for the next 12, 18, 24 months in calendar years 18 and uh, uh, 19 and 20, the results of 18 help validate what we're able to accomplish and achieve based on what we're wanting to, to do. So let me pause there for a second before I get to number 10. Um, and share that really in, in speaking to um, a donor today, really what we're looking at is um, really what the donor's thinking about. The donor is either a business person, an entrepreneur, and they're thinking about the same three things in their own world or have experienced it, the same as what you've uh, either had to do or you're doing on behalf of your organization, which is this. What is the opportunity? That's number one, what's the opportunity that you see that you can realize and that you can champion, what you can achieve? What are your goals, objectives, milestones? Who's on your team? Who wakes up every day saying, this is what we're called to do. This is what we're gonna accomplish as an outcome and a result. These are our milestones, this is the accountability, and this is the ROI. And then the third part to it is what's the cash flow to achieve it? Whether you're in nonprofit, you're in a ministry, or you're in the business world, it's the same three overlays. What is the opportunity? What's your your goals, objectives, who's on your team, what is the fruit and the outcome and the results of what you're doing on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, or an annual basis, and what's the cash flow to achieve it. So here's the, uh, the, the last tip. There's certainly more, but I just narrowed it down to, to these. Build community. Um, not only are we wanting to build community um, within the organization, we want to build community from donors to our organization donors knowing leadership or people from the field through video stories or when people from the field come and connect, whether it be at luncheons or gatherings. But there's also this draw of relationships that's, um, that's strong, it's always been this way. But be aware of the fact that donors love to connect with one another relationally. And uh, building the sense of community for purpose, 
objectivity, goals, outcomes, that they feel like that they're a part of something that others are a part of, that all ties back into the confidence piece that not only are we projecting and sharing what it is that we're accomplishing and doing, but donors also like to get a sense of who else is in the room, who else is a part of the mission. And it's an evolution in a sense of how donors are collaborating and working together. You have donors that have been around for a long time, maybe perceived to get big or, or not, but they're, they're ones that represent kind of that sage perspective where they're able to validate that we've been around and we've been a donor and supporter for three years, five years, 10 years, whatever that length of time. That builds a lot of confidence in people that are new coming around. They recognize people or they hear names and they, they see that there must be something really legitimate and real about your organization and your mission because of the other people that are involved. And then there's this middle group that have um, given or supported at some interval, maybe to their capacity or maybe they have more capacity. They all kind of work together where the donors that have been around for a long time create confidence for the donors that are um, coming on board and new. Hopefully that creates a little bit of a lift for people that have been around and have capacity to maybe do a little bit more or capacity to network. And then the, the newer donor actually brings more energy and enthusiasm and excitement back into the donor that's been around for a long time. So all of those aspects are all working together and uh, it's really cool to see all that come together relationally. So I hope that a, a couple of these illustrations help clarity, confidence, undergird with passion, looking at also from a business perspective, looking at what is the opportunity, um, undergirded with goals, objectives, outcomes, who's on your team for the result that you're wanting to accomplish and what's the cash flow to achieve it. And then, um, and then the top 10 tips essentially for uh, kicking off the new year 2019 in this first quarter. So thank you. Um, again, Steve Caliper on behalf of uh, DSG, uh, Development Services Group. You can visit our website, send me an email or reach out. Um, but um, ultimately, I'd love for you to uh, connect and learn more about our Doing Good Better University at uh, doinggoodbetter.org. I mean, certainly we'd be uh, thrilled to have you take a look at that. All the information is here, uh, doinggoodbetter.org, developmentservicesgroup.com. And uh, we certainly appreciate that you've taken some time to um, um, be a part of this journey um, on behalf of myself and my team. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless and uh, we appreciate how great you are. Thank you.